probably seen horse racing on TV. Maybe you've even thrown down a couple hundred bucks on lucky number seven. But the super rich experience horse racing on a whole other level. Mr. Victoria, I'm Brad Weisbrook from Team Valor. Good luck. Welcome to the VIP section at the Super Bowl of horse racing. The win here is it's on the biggest stage. So it's like any franchise winning their biggest event. It's gigantic. The Kentucky Derby may get all the attention, but the big money is here at the Breeders' Cup. Come back, Come on, boy. Come back. This is the best of the best running in the biggest race. This is LeBron James winning the NBA Finals. It's the richest two days in sports with $27 million up for grabs. And in this sport, whether you win millions or walk away with nothing, it all come down to a matter of inches. This weekend, two of the youngest players in the sport will fight for their share of prize money and bragging rights. Bradley Weisbord manages Team Valor, a group of high-profile investors and pro athletes who buy shares of thoroughbreds worth millions. We give our partners a chance to play in the big leagues with these people, and I think that they find that pretty amazing that they can do that. Team Valor's horse, Brujo, will be running in the $1 million dirt mile. The horse has had a great week of training, and we just hope he breaks well and has a good chance to win the race. In the Breeders' Cup. Then there's Justin Zayat. I'm a 21-year-old student. I'm a junior in New York University. I'm an economics major. Justin manages $60 million worth of thoroughbreds for his father's stable out of his dorm room at NYU. His multi-million dollar horse, Painter, will be running in the $5 million Breeders' Cup Classic. Does it make you happy? <laughs> Whoever wins this race is crowned champion. You're horse of the year. You're beating the best. And this is the best versus the best. It's the first of two days of races. And the Zayats have just arrived. It's like a family here, so everybody knows everybody's business. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. And when you own $60 million worth of horses, you're a really big deal. Right. Hey, Mark, how are you? They don't have any horses running today, so they're just here to have fun. Who have the biggest heart in the world? You, you, you. And the first stop <laughs> is to see the four-legged member of their family. Tomorrow's the last dance. Who's the champ? I haven't seen him in two months. He looks incredible. I mean, his weight, his flesh, everything just looks super. I think he's sitting on a big race. He does look incredible, especially considering what he's been through. A year before this race, he was so sick, no one thought he would even survive. It was extremely serious. It was extremely, extremely serious. He lost a huge amount of weight and had the same foot disease that claimed the lives of racing legends Secretariat and Barbaro. The whole thing about Painter is that Painter is an extremely aggressive animal. He showed his toughness on the racetrack and he showed his toughness in his fight. Every day he's getting better, he's getting stronger, he's getting more aggressive. And the Zayats are betting big that attitude will help him win on the track tomorrow. It's a $5 million race. The winners get three million. This race will increase Painter's value. Painter could be worth 12 million right now, and it could maybe raise him to even 20 million after this race. Let's go! Let's go, baby! Let's go for Let's Daddy! Go. Let's a few go. hours later, we find the Zayats are betting big. And when you're a high roller, you don't even have to leave the comfort of your VIP box. I'm good, thank you. Ahmed's making wagers from a private line on his cell phone. They're betting the pick four. They've already hit winners in the first three races, so if they win here, they bring home some serious cash. If they lose, they get nothing. The Breeders' Cup just staff, two million dollars. Justin and his dad place their bets on different horses. They're all in line, ready for the start. Justin's got Royal Delta. I'm probably alive for around $20,000 if she wins. His dad's going with the holder. My return will be around 1,000% on my original investment. They're off, and the Breeders' Cup distaff and Mike Smith Delta. is sending Royal Delta out of there. Beholder is fast, too, but so does to the outside of Royal Delta. 53, now Justin. Side by side. Justin, root for me, Justin. Go, 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 And she's lost it. This is all Beholder. Beholder and the Cup of the Kid. Gary Stevens have won the Breeders' Cup distaff with authority. 
prize money for the winning team, $1.2 million. Check out Justin's expression when he finds out how much they're taking home. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> That's it, close to a million dollars. It was a thrill, and I made a lot of money, so I'm tickle pink. <laughs> the money's nice, but Justin wants his dad to stay focused on what really matters. If we win the Breeders' Cup tomorrow, he, that's what he's here for. He's not here to hit all his bets. He's here to win the races. Bruce, Bradley Weisbord, and Team and Valor are I'm here to Bradley. win, too. Their horse, Brujo, is running next. How are you guys sitting? Bradley's been entertaining clients Good all morning, you. but his race is about to start. Game time. 20 minutes till the race. We'll head down to the paddock and we'll meet the jockey. All the partners are on pins and needles now. It was a relaxing day, but now the relaxing stops, the pressure starts, the pulse starts, and we'll see what happens. I'm excited. There's nothing we can do now but keep everybody calm and, and make sure they enjoy the experience, because that's why they own horses. They also own horses for the thrill of winning some cash. This race has a million dollar purse. Sounds like a lot of money, but Team Valor spent that much just to buy the horse they're running. We purchased Brujo for over a million dollars um, out of Uruguay. He set a track record at Morones of 134 years. If you see the video that we bought him out of, the race was very impressive. He won by 21 lengths. And that million dollar horse didn't do so hot last year. He got injured and only ran twice so they could really use a win here. If we don't have positive results in these races, we're not gonna have a very good business. And with just minutes left before the gate opens, go. the horses and Team Valor head down to the track. And he looks as good as a horse can look. Let's just well, hope he runs well, that way. Elite members-only clubs play an important role in the lives of the super rich. The Aspen Mountain Club is a luxury club atop Aspen Mountain. Our membership is capped at 350 members. It keeps a club in demand. And in a town full of bling, this tiny membership medallion is the ultimate status symbol. The mountain doesn't normally open until 9 o'clock, and we can send 10 members up at 8 o'clock, and they have the whole mountain to themselves. When our members walk in, they first walk into our boot room, and they can put on slippers. We have a lovely buffet set up every day. And we're not talking $10 overcooked burgers and warm beer. Here, you're getting poached salmon, a top shelf bar, and $800 bottles of wine. Eating at 11,000 feet outside with that view, it doesn't get more special than that. This special treatment will run you around $6,000 a year, which doesn't sound crazy, but there's also this. Of course, there is a initiation fee of $220,000. What you're really paying for is social status. They see the club as an extension of their lifestyle. While the Aspen Mountain Club may be the daytime playground of the super rich, at night, they go underground, literally, in the basement of a building behind a door simply marked private. Is my wife gonna see this? No. <laughs> Meet Louie, manager of the famed Caribou Club. And he's giving us a rare behind the scenes look before it opens. This is our main dining room. We're gonna go, I'm gonna show you our dance floor. This is one of our private dining room. This is our beautiful wine room. It holds about 3,500 bottles. But when the Boo, which is what the super rich call this place, opens at 6.30, it's members only. There is a lot of high net worth clubs, absolutely. Um, let's leave it at that. People would come here and meet friends. Become, they make friends from people from all over the world. Next thing you know, you meet uh, a certain gentleman and you are partying with him in his yacht in uh, Monaco and uh, he invites you to a Formula One race. And uh, it's, it's, it's actually very interesting. But you better believe that rubbing elbows with the wealthiest people in Aspen is gonna cost you. We offer a few different kinds of memberships. Uh, we have a $20,000 one, which is a lifetime membership for two people. If you're only in Aspen for a week, you can score access to the Boo for $1,500. But that just gets you in the door. 
Over here is one of my favorite rooms, it's a powwow. We've had some princes and kings that have come that way, they, you know, they, they're very low key and that's what they want. They really don't go and socialize or go dancing. We do get um, a lot of special requests. We get some special requests that are just, I'm, if I would tell you, you wouldn't even believe me that they're asking me those things. Most of the members belong to multiple clubs, country clubs and things like that. And when they come here, the first thing they do is they get a hug and a kiss from me and, and uh, they love that. And I know that a lot of these men do not get that, you know, in their clubs in Kansas or in the back east or anywhere else. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> Well, welcome to Lloyd Wright's Navarro House. This is one of the most significant architectural houses in LA. Super broker Dolly Lenz is in LA with her West Coast partner, Aaron Kerman. They're checking out a house in the elite Hollywood Hills. For privacy and security reasons, we can't tell you who the owner is. What we can tell you is that it was once home to the composer Leonard Bernstein as well as Diane Keaton, and more recently, Christina Ricci. There's even a little bit of Hollywood scandal connected to this home. Ramon Navarro, who's the star of the original Ben-Hur, built the house in the 1920s for his personal assistant, who was also secretly his gay lover. Navarro reportedly took the home back after he found out that his male companion had embezzled most of his fortune. <laughs> You know, this is for somebody that collects homes, like they would collect art. I have a ton of clients that are, and I'll call them home collectors, just like an art collection. And they'll have five or six in any given city or cities around the globe. What makes this home such a valuable collectible is not the celebrities who live there, but the celebrity architect who designed it, Frank Lloyd Wright. Not the Frank Lloyd Wright, America's most famous architect, but his son. Just like super rich art collectors like to have a Picasso or a Monet, someone's gonna buy this house and say, it's a Frank Lloyd Wright, and just hope that no one says, senior or junior. The house is built into a hill. It has uh, copper trim throughout the whole property. It's been restored to the architect's original vision. It has a really, almost industrial feel, which is amazing for the fact that it was built in 1928. Dolly, look at these windows and doors. You know, they're in such great condition. And can you imagine from 1928 to be looking like this? I know. We won't be looking like this. No, for no. sure not. <laughs> no. not, with, not with this job. No. <laughs> so uh, let me take you to the uh, master bedroom, which is a real treat. Oh, can't wait. Is that a proposition? I can be. <laughs> Wow, this is really sexy space already. It is, I, this is really wow. one of the most unique bedrooms I've ever had the opportunity to uh, view and I actually mean, sell in the home. Look at this, oh my god. And look at the beautiful furniture here as well. I mean, it's furniture just... must be priceless. I mean, it, it is. It's, every it's, single piece looks more amazing than the last. Well, the owner has great taste, obviously. Yeah. Is this another master? Uh, you know, this house technically has two masters. Oh, wow. Look at this gorgeous view you have. It's almost like you're in a tree house. Exactly. It is a tree house. You uh -huh. know, you just feel exactly that way. And it's really a great, unique opportunity for somebody to really, and there's no other way to say it, own a piece of art. This piece of art is really just a two-bedroom house. But with its Hollywood past and its famous architect, it commands a premium. Price tag, nearly $4.5 million. Now let's sell it. Let's go. Yeah.